Ciao, Juventini of the world. I hope you are doing well. It's evening for me, not to be honest. It's in the middle of the night when I'm recording with Mo. Uh, but uh, I'm super excited. Tomorrow is uh, Champions League again. And I know that when we say Champions League, people on the channel, they love to hear me singing the champion. And that's what I wanted to do again today. So I hope you are doing well. I'm here again with my friend Mo. Ciao, Mo. How are you doing today? Ciao, Giuseppe. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm ready for tomorrow. Excited about a game where actually we are already qualified, right? That's true. That's true. But there is still something really important we have to get, which is first place. First place and also uh, finding uh, confidence. Finding confidence because uh, we come from some games like Ferenc Varos where it was quite difficult for us uh, because we won in the last uh, second. And then uh, Benevento, the same game actually as uh, Ferenc Varos, but we were not able to score in the last second. So I believe that it will be a real uh a decisive game from Pirlo to play also with some players that uh, uh, la lately were not always starting. I speak about uh, Kulusevski and uh, McKinney. Curious to see if you have put them in the lineup or not. We will see that in a second. For the yeah. new people joining the channel uh, for the first time or they discovered the format, what we are doing on this format, it's quite easy. Mo is uh, looking at all the games of our opponents, of our uh, Juventus as well, for sure. And then he's uh, speaking about uh, uh, a few things. He's predicting the lineups that are always different. That's one thing, expected 11. And then he goes through uh, um, the strength of the opponents, their weaknesses, the opportunities that we will have, and also the threat, the danger of their uh, of the other team. And then we finish, as always, with some prediction. Last time, he said 3-1 for Juve versus uh, Benevento. We did 1-1, one, one, so uh, you were wrong. But the time before, you were totally correct with the 2-1 uh, the versus Ferenc Varo. So uh, let's start immediately, because you have something special to show us. Uh, uh, I already spoke about it uh, on the channel, but you have put a, a better picture that I showed. So let's go through that one. Absolutely. That's uh, Stéphanie Frappard. She's a French ref. Uh, it's going to be the first time a female ref uh, officiating basically a, a UEFA Champions League game, which is something huge. It's going to be uh, Juventus Dynamo. And but it's not the first time that she uh, she was a ref for a big game. She was the ref for the. Super, Super Copa, the yep. UEFA yeah. Super Cup between Liverpool and Chelsea. And she was also the ref of the final of the Women's uh, World Cup. So she's sure. very experienced. She's only 37 and uh, she went up the ranks really uh, quickly. So just for 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 you to know because uh, i told it also today i think i was speaking about it in jb world for the people that are interested in jb world we had a fantastic live it will be published uh, soon on the juventibus uh, youtube so i will put the link and uh, so that you can find it but uh, i was saying actually that uh, i prefer to have a really good women referee than a mediocre man and that's where I want to stop the discussion. Uh, if if people are are because some people were asking uh, Giuseppe, why are women in the foot uh, uh, men football? Again, for me, it's a quality. If you are good, I don't care if you are a man or a woman. So yeah, that's same it. Same thing. There are men referees in the women football, so it doesn't matter. So I'm happy again that it's Juventus that start with it. We didn't choose this time, but I'm really, really, really happy about that. Yeah. Ranking, not a lot to say, I believe. Yeah, so we're just three points behind Barcelona. Uh, again, Barcelona has been doing uh, on and off uh, in, in their league. So uh, a lot of their players will be rested. So maybe they're going to lose points. This is the time for us to get first place. This is uh, really important. Dinamo Kiev and Ferenc Varoshi, they're fighting for the UEFA, uh, the, sorry, the, U, um, I was going to say UEFA, Third place. EuroLeague. Yeah. No, it's a very changing. I'm still, I'm still in the 90s. <laughs> Makes sense. I always say the, the same, UEFA Cup or, uh, um, uh, luckily you didn't say Inter Toto, that doesn't exist at all anymore. 
No, it's an important one because uh, if we win, if Barcelona uh, win or lose, whatever, then we still have a chance to finish first. Um, expected 11, um, because we had the press conference of Pirlo. I'm curious. Let me see. Yeah, so goal is Chesney at the back. So I know he, well, you told me uh, he said Danilo and Cuadrado most likely will need some rest. But again, uh, Demiral is not 100%, I think. And putting three pure defenders was never done before. So I still pick Danilo on the right and Alexandro on the left. Uh, Cuadrado was not uh, great during the last game, so he needs some rest. And uh, deservedly, but he needs some rest. Uh, just, just before you go to the yeah. other ones, uh, mm -hmm. um, Alexandro and Danilo, um, if we play, I totally agree with you. I don't know what will happen tomorrow, if they will play with three or not. It would surprise me because we never did. But if we start with that defensive lineup, who will have the uh, attacking duties? Because we know that there is always one side that goes more up and the other one rest. Is it Alexandro that goes up or Danilo? That's the beauty of it. I think they're going to alternate. Makes sense. And they're going to alternate. I'm, I'm sensing that uh, Alexandro will not go as much up because uh, we're going to explain why. Uh, and you have Chiesa there that uh, with Fabio, so they're covered on that side. Yeah, uh, you have McKenny and Kulusevski with Danilo providing those uh, long passes. I think it's going to be Danilo going more up. But again, you're going to see uh, a little bit of Danilo going up, a little bit of Alexandro, and yeah, you're going to see three defenders also. So and for, for the, the midfield, yeah, I picked Rabiot and McKenny. And Chiesa and Kulusevski, which Chiesa and Kulusevski, this is how they play during the last game. I believe it was the first time that they played in those roles, and they did really well. Um, you had Ramsey as well, but uh, I'm not putting him today. I'm curious. For the attack, there is no 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 surprises because they already said that Pirlo confirmed as well. Dybala will rest because he will play versus Torino. Uh, yeah. Because we know uh, for the people that uh, missed it, uh, the, uh, Morata will have two games of suspension, Torino and Genoa. Annoying. And how are they playing, uh, Mo? So they're going to play 4-4-1-1 and this converts easily to 4-3-3. Uh, sorry, 4-4-3. Um, and here you have Shaparenko that he left his usual uh, position instead of Shepelev. Normally, Shapar Shaparenko is at the back, but because Bulyaski is still injured, Shaparenko took that position there. Yeah. Uh, Tsigankov is someone to watch out for. He's really dangerous. <laughs> Uh, Verbich is going to start according to like uh, the pronostics and uh, looking at the last games. And their defense is their typical defense. Popov might start. He is a pure defender. Uh, but I don't see a lot of changes there. I have uh, I have no idea who Popov is, so I'm always surprised and amazed about how many players you know more uh, <laughs> uh, about about their weakness um, because it's 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 nice. Uh, Champions League is nice because you have home and away in a really short time. So we spoke about their weaknesses before playing their uh, the game where we won two yeah. zero. Uh, was Pirlo listening? Uh, and uh, uh, or or maybe the the trainer of Dynamo Kiev was he watching the channel and were they putting in practice what we already identified? Absolutely. So this is at the beginning of uh, the first half, uh, Dynamo Kiev against Juve, and we saw that this is the triangle that we presented during the last uh, pregame. Yes, we see it here again. Supriaga, uh, Bulyaski is right behind him. And then you have Tsigankov on the other side there. Yeah. So that's the triangle that we're talking about. And they're always going to favor going to the right. 
So Tsiyankov passes to Kedziora. This is their uh, right back. He's going to go up a lot. And this is a strength for them, but also a weakness. And we'll discuss why. Uh, so Priyaga there, he's uh, hiding, waiting. But then uh, in the next uh, image, we see him. He's trying to score, but he's between Bonucci and Kellini. So no way. That's that's a difficult one. No, but it's funny because you clearly spoke about the triangle eh, before the game, and then you see that uh, what you identify, they've put it in practice. You see clearly here, and then also playing on the right uh, makes sense. And then they had another one. Yeah, so the other one, we didn't talk uh, a lot uh, about it, but look, it's 85th minute. They're losing 2-0. They're pushing very high. So this is something we have to watch out. They're going to push high a lot. So you have Verbich there on Demiral and Supriaga getting ready to go on Chesney. So Demiral has no choice but to pass back. Chesney is there. Then Supriaga and Verbich, they form this triangle trying to block Chesney and take the ball away from him and forcing him basically to shoot it far. You know, you know what uh, that means for me. Eighty-fifth minute, you lose two-zero. They are still pressing tomorrow. The, it's an important game for them as well, huh? because as you said in the beginning of the video, they still have a third spot to go. So it will. It's not because we are qualified that they will not play. They will go for it. So mm -hmm. we have to pay attention. Otherwise, it can be a really dangerous uh, game for us. Yeah. Um, and and then you have we have a. Uh, their weakness, actually? Yeah. So this is one thing that uh, we mentioned also last time. If we, if you pressure high, they're going to make mistakes. And uh, because uh, they're defenders, they're not experienced, they're all young, uh, they panic uh, quickly. So here we have an example of Kedziora uh, being pressured by Chiesa. Ramsey is also getting ready. You have Morata from the other side. Rabio is ready. So, you know, like... You see, this is a block already, not giving a lot of options there. So Kedziora, he has no choice but to pass back to Z Zabarnie. Zabarnie, he's uh, also getting pressured by Ramsey. And you see Chiesa already covering his man, Morata covering over there. He doesn't have a lot of choices. So he does something really silly, which is passing it to the middle. And Habio. Uh, is able to cut it. Now, we know Rabio is going to run all the way, but here I wanted to point out something really important that Rabio should have done. If you look at Morata, he's by himself. He's far from the defender. The ideal thing would have been for Rabio to pass it to Morata. And he was not of sight. And he was not of sight. But Rabio decided to go, so he was forced to pass the ball. But and uh, the Dynamo Kiev defenders were able to regroup and uh, put it out. Yeah. So you know, it, it, it's it's funny because here you clearly see that because that game was really well played by Juve, eh? and you see that what Pirlo is asking from you know enjoying to recuperate the ball and so on. You see that they have put it in practice, and if it's one of the games that we won two zero, it's not it's not a surprise. Eh? It makes totally sense. Then Rabiot makes the wrong decision because he was not quick enough, but at least you know we we were able to do what uh, uh, Pirlo was asking, yeah. and then we have another one. Yeah, I picked another one there. Uh, Morata, look, he's dropping all the way to the back there, uh, providing support. We criticized a lot Dybala on that, but if you do that on occasion and then go back uh, help, this is what all strikers should do. Yeah. Uh, so Morata, he passes the ball to Kuluzewski, and then you see all the way from the other side, that orange line here, you see Ramsey and then Chiesa also by himself. Uh, and then Kuluzewski passes to Ramsey. Ramsey right away spots Chiesa, who's alone. Kedziora, that's the right back. He's playing a center back because one of their defenders is not there. Mm. So this is a huge opportunity. That's because of them uh, playing a lot on the right and going up and then leaving, uh, leaving us alone, right? That's right. And it's not the only time that you see Chiesa by himself. You saw it several on several occasions during the game. 
And this is exactly what happened here. They're trying to catch up with him. He's uh, pretty fast, but unfortunately, uh, you're going to see the next slides. He's there. He could have passed, but he's also a striker. He shot with his weaker foot. Uh, it was a nice one, but uh, their goalkeeper was able to, uh, mm -hmm. to stop the one. Who do we have to take uh, uh, to pay attention to? What is their uh, dangerous man? Yeah, so I mentioned that uh, at the beginning, Shaparenko, he's uh, a young uh, Ukrainian, uh, still fresh. He was associated with many clubs last year, United, Arsenal, West Ham, etc. So we, sh we sh have to watch out. If we put uh, some pressure on him, uh, we can contain uh, Dinamo Kiev. So he's not going to play in his ideal position. This is something good for us. But uh, again, he, he could provide some key passes. The number 10, right? They're number 10. Mo, it's the time that you prefer. I know you oh, love boy. it. I thought it was over. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. First, the prediction. And for the people who are watching, put it uh, always uh, under not only your prediction, but uh, uh, what you learned from uh, from today's video and so on. I know that Mo is always commenting on uh, and trying to reply to everyone. So don't hesitate to put that. Prediction, Mo. Absolutely. Another 2 0. Another 2 0 for us this time. Again. Of course, of course. No, <laughs> we lose to zero <laughs> at home against Dinamo Kiev. That would be a disaster. You think that the red card would uh, affect uh, mentally uh, Morata, uh, or uh, he will go for no. uh, uh, so no, he I can do a so. beautiful performance tomorrow as yeah. well. Yeah, I see tomorrow Ronaldo score uh, one goal to have seven hundred fifty in career. Uh, he can already catch up with Nedved and Higuain because they have uh, 12 goals for Juve in the Champions League each. Ronaldo has 11, so he can enter actually the five, the top five uh, ever scorer for Juve uh, wow. in Champions League. So I, I'm sure if not two, one for sure is Ronaldo. <laughs> well, repeat me the, the prediction, 2-0. Two zero, two zero. Two zero. I have to know that down. Uh, thank you, Mo was a really nice uh, nice time again for the people who doesn't know more yet uh, I, I call him El Tactico uh, as the videos but uh, you can see and find him on Twitter at at Chehali easy to find uh, always there present discussing about Juve really nice so you have to go and follow him uh, thanks for watching the tradition says that Mo is closing the channel thank you for being me here Mo I leave you alone with the audience perfect so thank you everyone for watching i hope you enjoyed this one we tried to bring something new uh not repeat ourselves again uh, so that's why we analyzed the last game send me your comments uh if you have questions etc i'll always try to reply when i see it and i hope you have a great game tomorrow ciao guys <laughs>